Banner's Natch on that place. Can we raise hands? Banner's Natch? I think I see three hands, so this is going to be very interesting. Um, okay, so before we get started, please take your phones out. Zoom in to see the QR code. If you're using iOS, it should be native. It's going to detect and pop up on the top. If, you, if you're using Android, make sure you get your QR code scanner. And if you're not getting from the back, I'm not going to be angry if you come over and get closer. So um, what we're going to do here today is, so how do we talk about customer experience inside a can in a framed way? It's very hard. So what we're going to try to do here today is to do that together. We're going to travel together and experience something together. And it's your journey that talks about AI, talks about technology, but way beyond that, it talks about experiences. So it's a journey that I took a couple of months ago. I travel a lot for my work between San Fran, between Latin America, and I was um, taking off from Miami to go to San Fran. And what we're all going to do now is you're going to travel with me. So please hold your phones, and we're going to stop as we go to decide what we want to do together, OK? So I take the plane. I depart from Miami Airport going to San Fran. That's like a six-hour flight. I'm inside the plane, um, and OK, so we have a lot of people connected. It's actually working. Um, and I get to San Fran, and I decide, you know, what should I listen in the Uber? Because, you know, it was like a six-hour flight. I'm like, destroyed. It's a coach flight. Because even business class in that plane is really horrible. Uh, so what should I listen to? So that's actually, like, really tight. Um, so what we're going to do here is whenever you guys decide, that's what's going to happen if it works. If it doesn't, we laugh together and we move on. Um, so what we're going to do is, let's say we're going to listen to that. So I, you know, I'm in the Uber, and I'm going to the hotel. It's been a six-hour flight, and I, you know, I had a snack during the plane. And you know, when you're flying in that plane, the snack is like a piece of cheese platter or something really small. Um, and then I get to the hotel, and it's time to, um, to check in. And you know, six hours later, it's probably midnight. I really want to check in. Um, I'm tired. I'm feeling really, really lazy. I remember that I have a conference in the morning, and I have my boss calling me, and I have 700 non-read emails because the Wi-Fi was not working. Now, when I get there, I realize I don't have my wallet. I forgot my wallet, and I have no cash, no cards, and no license. This is actually something that happened. And probably not only with me, but with all of us, right? So this is everything I had. I had my phone, and I had my passport. 21st century, right? We all say technology is amazing, and life is, a, is, is totally different now, but this is everything I had, besides my luggage, of course. Um, and I had to check in. So how do you check in at a hotel with your phone and your passport? So. When I am about to check in, they're like, sir, you know, you got to put some sort of way to guarantee your room. So how should I pay? It's amazing that we have an audience about FinTech, and nobody's choosing to check. Um, anyways, so like, I want to pay, and I'm, that's all I have. And I want to do Apple Pay. Now, I say, I go back to the lady, I'm like, OK, I want to, you know, this is my passport. You have my reservation. I can also see my Marriott number here. Um, it's like, can I do Apple Pay? Sorry, sir. You have to swipe a card. I'm like, um, then I'm like, what should I do? It's almost midnight in San Fran. I don't have a card. I have Apple Pay. And I'm like, well, Apple Pay? And Lots of places equals cash, equals money. I'm like, well, what's open now? I'm like, OK, Walgreens. So I, I walk around like two blocks, and I go to a Walgreens store. And then I realize, sorry, sir, you can't take cash out. 
on Apple Pay inside a Walgreens store. And again, this is, this is happening. This is actually a true story. And I, I kind of remember how angry I was at that moment. Um, then I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to CVS, which was actually quite close, um, to be precise. And I go in, and I walk to that CVS, and they had something that I remember before giving to my sister. They had a net spending card, which being non-US citizen, you can put up to $249 without needing a US citizen ID, which I didn't have with me when my, my wallet wasn't there. Um, so I'm like, 249 bucks should be enough. You know, I can do Apple Pay, 249 bucks, I get a card, I go back, ladies, swipe my card, and I go back to a shower and to bed. Um, and it's a credit card, I can swipe it, and I go back to the hotel, happy, I have a card, you know, we speak the same language, and it's like, take my card, swipe my card, and, uh, sir, your card is saying declined. And I had the same feeling again that I want to, you know, I want to shoot somebody. I'm going nuts. And, you know, I realize that I have to activate the card, which I just bought and I just paid, but it's not activated. And I'm like, okay, I think I can do that, right? It's just I'm probably a phone call away from solving this, you know, just journey. And, you know, I look at the card, and I turn the card, of course. There's only a phone, always. You have to call. And I call, and like, sir, thanks for calling, but our call center is only open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm like, okay, this is it's really an interesting day, right? This is like an epic journey. And I'm like, so um, what should I do? And again, what should I do? What option do I have? And this is fascinating. This is where actually humanity comes back and makes the difference. I'm like, you know, what should I do? And I remember of Joe, one of my work buddy, like I called Joe and like, Joe, you know what? Um, you know, I, you gotta help me out because I'm out of options. So come here and please slice your corporate card so I can go to my room. And he came like, I don't know, 45 minutes later, uh, he came in and he swiped his card. And, you know, I'm like, welcome, sir, you're checked in. This is the Wi-Fi password. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm home. And um, so I go up, and the hotel is really nice. The room is nice. It's a really nice property. Um, I'm exhausted because I've been, right now, it's, it's like 2 a.m. Um, but, you know, there's still a human inside myself, and I'm like, what should I do now that I have a room, you know? How should I end my night? Should I go to bed, or should I make a gin and tonic? Because, you know, I really want to end this night in, a, in a, an iconic way. Um, and then I'm like, okay, so I'll have some gin and tonic. And actually, there's no service after midnight, and there's no minibar. So why did they need a card? If there's no minibar, do, do they think that I'm going to steal the hair dryer or something like that? It's crazy, right? Um, but anyways, so I'm like, again, and you know what? I'm like, okay, I'm going to bed. Uh, now, what should I do? Should I actually set an alarm or just, you know, leave it like random to luck? Let's see what happens if I wake up, if I don't. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set an alarm. I have a big conference tomorrow, so I'm going to wake up at 7 a.m. It's a new day, OK? So the life starts over. Uh, remember Groundhog Day, that you actually, your day starts over in the same reality? Um, so day starts over. I go to my conference. And actually, what should I do before I go to my conference? Because remember, I don't have a card. So if I need to buy some coffee at the conference, if they don't take Apple Pay, I have the same issue. If I have a problem with Uber, I have the same issue. So um, what we're going to do is, so let's go to NetSpend. I actually called NetSpend. They were open at this time. 20 questions later, because again, realize that this is the first time NetSpend ever heard of Bruno. You know, I never, I, they, I, they, I never opened their app. I didn't have a form of communicating with them before. So that was very frustrating. But 
your card is active. So I, now I had 249 bucks. And I went to the conference, and the conference started, and life was happy. I felt like a human being, part of civilization again. Now, as I'm going throughout the conference, something happens that changes my experience again and brings my mood up back to, real, uh, to the real levels. I get an SMS out of SFO Airport, you know, saying, we found your wallet. We found your wallet inside the plane. And your wallet is now sitting in lost and found. So at that time, one and a half, almost one and a half or a day um, later, they f I found out that they had my wallet. Uh, and I actually forgot the wallet inside the plane because I took my credit card out to pay for the snack. So those 10 bucks that I had to slice the card to pay for that cheese platter actually started all of this, this chain reaction. Um, and what I wanted to do here is to actually do a parallel of experiences here, because this is one example that we just created together. And again, what we're doing here is I have presentations that go, they go both ways, right? So if we go one way, our end is different. Uh, what we actually came up to now, it's an experience that has sort of a happy ending. I think at least I found my wallet. Now, this was my journey. You know, I lost my wallet, I was at check-in, I found the solution. I, again, when I thought everything was solved, net spend again had to be activated. I went back to the hotel, I had to deal with all their stubbornness, because, you know, hotels, it's process, process, process. Um, Joe came to rescue me, he made the difference. I got a replacement card that couldn't be sent because I was not a citizen, so I had to use net spend. Um, and then they found my wallet with everything inside it. So the reason that I wanted to do this with you all is so that you guys could experience the feelings. If I just presented this in a flat way, there would be no feelings of experiences, right? Um, and this is what, when we talk about customer experience, this is usually what we do. We say, hey, this is the, this is the standard. This is what you should do. But at the end of the day, we're talking about experiences, and they have emotions, and that's, that's the most in interesting part that makes an experience an experience. So what we believe at Genesis um, is that we should be able, with what we have today, to reimagine those journeys. Again, we don't think we're going to be able to make Bruno remember that he forgot his wallet. Things will happen that are out of our control. The way we establish technology humans and mechanisms and processes to do service recovery and to create alternatives is what matters. And this is how we reimagine customer experiences and customer journeys. And that's not actually very complex. We're not talking about rocket science here. We're talking about moments of opportunity where, talk, where technology should step in and allow humans to make a difference. And that's possible today because now we have AI, we have digital technology, we have many platforms that, if combined with the right ingredients, like the right humans, the right culture, the right environment, should be able to lift those opportunities and change our experiences. How we want to do that? We want to do that with, first, AI evolution. And what I'm going to show to you guys here is something we're doing already. It's live in production with one of our customers. Um, it's still a concept. What we believe is a good opportunity that should be able to fix probably most of my journeys. I'm going to show you a two-minute quick video so you can see how, how that is in real life. By the way, this is in partnership with Google. Hello, Mala. I'm an automated agent. Welcome back to eBay. It looks like we just delivered you white Pamarka size six running shoes on June 25th. Are you calling about this order? Yeah, exactly. Okay. How can I help you with that order? Unfortunately, they don't fit, so I need to return them. I can help you with that. I am starting a return for you. You will be receiving an email with the details of your return. Cool, thanks. Mala conversed with a virtual agent that understood Mala's intent to return her shoes and automatically fulfilled it. But now Mala needs another, better fitting pair of shoes. The virtual agent will detect this and will offer to connect Mala to a live agent. One more thing, would you like me to connect you to an eBay fashion expert to help find you the right shoes? Yeah, that'd be great. Mala now wants to purchase a pair of shoes. 
Google Contact Center AI recognizes this intent and works with Genesis Predictive Routing to find the best agent to help. Genesis predicts that Josh, among all qualified agents, is the best matching fashion expert to help Mala at this moment. Mala's call is routed to Josh, including all previous contacts about Mala's order and her conversation with a virtual agent. Hello there, Mala. My name is Josh. I'd be happy to help you find the right... The transcript of Mala's conversation with a virtual agent is visible to Josh, and her conversation with Josh is also transcribed and interpreted in real time. As Josh and Mala are speaking, Agent Assist interprets the audio and builds context on the meaning and the intent of the conversation. This allows Agent Assist to find relevant answers and articles to help Josh in real time. I definitely recommend tennis shoes since they're designed to have the right support, grip, and to avoid an injury. What type of court will you be playing on? It will be primarily hard court. And is Pomarka your brand of preference, or would you like to explore other brands? I like Pomarka shoes. Agent Assist detected in real time that another knowledge base page contains the right content for Mala's request and made it available to Josh. All right. I just searched eBay for you for hard court tennis shoes, women's size six, and I found a great listing. Would you like me to text it to you or would you rather receive it via email? Could you text it? Certainly. Thanks for choosing eBay. Right. So. There's a few things that I wanted to highlight here. First of all, we're not talking about AI replacing humans. We're talking about blended AI, which is what we believe is the future of where technology is going. We're not, we don't believe that the best experiences will come only from AI. There will be a majority of experiences that will be automated by AI in the extent that they are, they are enough to suffice that intent. But the combination about the best human trained to do that with the right empathy, with the right work culture, combined with that AI is where the power really resides. And if you actually realize this combination with the 24-7 availability of AI, of virtual assistants and all, all the power that it unlocks, and the humans that could call me back on those journey on that journey, sorry, that I just had with you all, something as easy as this could have changed my entire experience. So this is where the power really resides. Let's say when I need to activate my card, maybe I could do that with AI, but when something happens, somebody calls me and say, you know, sir, um, we're here for you, and um, we found your wallet, or, you know, we're gonna give you a credit that you can use, and we'll send you an emergency card, or something like that. This is where humans actually make the difference. So that's what we call blended AI, uh, and that's where we're putting all our bats and all our R&D to make sure that we not only create a transition path to make sure that all the humans we have today are empowered and actually work better, but also that in a, in a medium to long term that we create a transition curve to get the best of both worlds. Now, that's gonna happen through digital, that's gonna happen through AI, and that's gonna happen through cloud. That's all happening today. What we saw here is not a, a project for 2025. This is live today. So the message here is the combination of these three ingredients are actually catalyzing one, one, uh, one, and, one and the other. So when you think about your strategies, it's very important that you consider the blended part that you can leverage what you have today, the impacts that you can have today with it, but also what this technology can also enable you to change and reimagine your journeys. Because at the end of the day, let's not forget that we were the humans. I was the human on the end of that journey being massacred by not having a way out, a company to support me, or something to change my journey into something that would actually help me. So this is for us to think. We'll be here throughout the event. Uh, please visit our booth. There's a lot that we can talk. There's a lot that we can share. Decide how to do, when to do, and, and there's lots of different ways. But the main point here is let's think about the experiences and ways to reimagine them. Thank you so much.